always used to say I was born to shine. I don't know why I said those ridiculous things, obviously. <laughs> the congregation used to laugh their heads off. I remember when, I remember, I remember when I lost my mind. I never thought of myself being a church, being a vicar. I never thought that was for me. Partly because lots of vicars said I was too crazy. But maybe I'm crazy. Maybe you're crazy. Maybe we're crazy. Probably. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Dad is rushing as the usual. I grew up in a very sad and hard and dreadful, abusive household. I was very abused myself. But one day I tried to kill myself when I was five years old. But I ran away from home um, and I found myself in a very little church. I'd never been to church before. I had never heard about God or Jesus. And I gave my life to Jesus. And I preached my first sermon when I was seven years old. But it was always a challenge for me, um, even being in church and being accepted for who I was. I had to be scorched at home, but in church I was too colorful. I was too flamboyant. I was too exotic to become a vicar. So I want to become a doctor. Um, and I got into med school. And one day, God said I want you to become a vicar. And then when I then was ordained for the first time back in Brazil, I decided that I didn't want to lead the church. I felt my heart was for the people outside the church. I felt if I couldn't be welcomed in the church, I needed to go outside in the world, out in the world, and find those people that are broken as I was. I went and I worked in the countryside of Brazil with lots of poor people. I worked with lots of prostitutes. I worked in gay nightclubs. I worked <laughs> in prison. I worked everywhere. There was a particular vicar that I worked with that wanted to sack me because I was very happy. And his words to me was, I don't think it's normal that you laugh as much as you do. <laughs> I just said to him, I don't think it's normal that you don't laugh at all. We were desperate. No, 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 we weren't really. We, I think what happened was we, it was a spark in Peterson. He gave me the job and I had to go and pioneer a kind of new community within the church. He can get away with stuff that I would never get away with as an English vicar. But there's something about being Brazilian, about his particular character and gifts, that means he can get away with almost anything. Um, yeah, back soon. See later. I'll call you. What we've noticed here is now he's moved to Chesham, the coldest place in the country, very often. He just basically, he's always wrapped in a duvet, that's basically. So may, maybe he's got a fashion sense, but we haven't seen it yet. Just, <laughs> just basically, it's just blankets. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Look at you there. How many layers have you got on? Uh, well, I'm Three, not, there's, four, a, a personal, there's a personal question. <laughs> Why would a vicar choose to study fashion? Why not? <laughs> you know. Fashion deals with a very important concept, which is fashion directly deals with the body. So the body is a very important concept for Christian faith. But I'm worried about the sizes, you know, these women being, you know, really skinny all the time. And it's just a bit disturbing. There's a huge problem about the body image in the industry. In my work as a clergyman, I have sat for hours and hours listening to lots of young women struggling with it. And I'm dealing with the mess, <laughs> you know, on a day-to-day basis. I'm in a very um, 
interesting place. Uh, I would say that I am sort of in a fragile um, place right now, trying to explain to people why I'm doing this sometimes is hard. Somebody told me about him, so there's this amazing Brazilian who's a fantastic networker and he's really interested in the arts. Okay. <laughs> Peterson! I feel that my, my work with the creatives is about giving them a platform where they can explore their creativity, their imagination. He's about five foot nothing tall. He's diminutive in stature, but he's got an extraordinarily large heart. And I think that was what really struck me. He was a man of enormous energy. He was a man with a passion for the arts. He was a man with a passion for Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, I'm working for the Diocese of London now. Yes. So I work as a missionary to the creatives. Yes. So my job is to make yes. sure that you guys yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. are well looked after. I don't see those people because they're famous. I don't see those people because they are very talented. I love all that they do, but I see them for who they are. So much is demanded from you when you're on a stage mm. and then when you're off the stage and you're trying to come up with new ideas and things, that can be really difficult. It really helps when you've got people who are supportive mm. of you, mm. who understand that you can be pulled in many directions. I don't feel that we should be seen as the patron to the arts. I want us to be the patron to the artists. I think the biggest kind of support that you, know, you can give to anybody who's creative is the moral support. Yes. Yes, things might be difficult, you might come across a few stumbling blocks, you know, but if they feel that they're supported by people who are like, we're all behind you, we'll do whatever we can. Like you a know, community, really. A community. Yeah, community. Of course, I'm trying to build a community, so that's quite therapeutic, so there's yeah. lots of painting, lots yes. of art yeah. going on. Artists as well. I'm an artist, yeah. So what kind of artist are you? I'm, I do performance and video art. You know, sometimes they're really surprised when I say I'm a vicar. <laughs> you know, sometimes they say, which is the one that I like the most, oh, you're too good looking to be a vicar. What is made of? It's um, bronze. Bronze. And he was prepared to inhabit a world where Christians were not there in great numbers. Hey, if you don't say you tried, I, wanna I, wanna I was in a party recently and I met this lovely singer called Desmond Mix. But to me, what was really troubling is that he heard what he was doing was from the devil. And he is struggling to come back because it's not easy to be in the music industry. He loves God. He loves going to church. He loves reading the Bible. And he needed that, and I want to give that to him. My experience with a lot of ministers and a lot of deacons, um, it's all about control and ego. And that's something that I've never experienced from this man. We do need to think about how to engage with them in the 21st century. You know, speak the language, uh, go where they're at. <laughs> To have a, an institution that would welcome people, people like me who are colorful. <laughs> <laughs> and trying to say, I get, I get that you don't like the institution. And to be frankly, I think lots of because I know and speak for myself, they don't like it either. It, it would mean, you know, mean a world of difference to a lot of people. It makes all the difference. Yeah. You don't feel as though you're a voice crying in the wilderness. No, uh, oh yes, oh, well done. And I wanted to create a space that if those people, whether they're famous or not, want someone to talk to, I want to be there. And I can't see why the church and the vicar cannot be there for them in a very explicit way. What we're discovering is that the, the church recognises there is a space here which we should be inhabiting. We've got to find a way of doing it which has got credibility. We've got to find people who can walk into that space. And I think that's exactly what Peterson's got.
Into this house we're born.